Go pedal, baby cakes, pedal. When something's taken away from you, you never really realize how important it was to you or how good it was for you. you know, I knew if I had a fighting chance, I was going to pull it off just because I'm not going to quit. Let's go. I'm just thankful I can be in the water again. Camera two, set. Camera one, camera two, while you're rolling. Okay, this is uh, scene 1.0 of the Kai documentary, take one. My name's Kai Bartlett. I'm a father, family man, entrepreneur, paddler, a guy that enjoys lifestyle, my lifestyle. <laughs> I was born in Honolulu. You know, uh, living in Hawaii, I grew up surfing and bodyboarding and I always looked forward to the weekends because I knew I'd be getting to the beach. But I think you always cherish that time in the water. Yeah, I was always active doing stuff. I was a small kid, not real strong, but I could go for hours. Then, uh, of course, once I hit my 20s, I started paddling. One day we're heading out to the Mokes, my friend and I, on these canoes that we fixed up. And uh, after we had a couple beers, it's like, hey, let's, let's head outside the Mokes and do a run down a flat island. This would be my first downwind experience in, in a one-man. We start surfing the ocean swells, and you know, I just start looking left and right and thinking, wow, this is killer, man. This is freedom. I, there, there's nobody around me. That was it. I really got to look into this sport because this could be something. My first canoe, I shaped my first canoe in um, 2001. It really ended up being a dud, but I had so much fun. You, you know, you're starting out with a block of foam and everything's up here. It's just getting creative with it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a learning process and I feel the more you can do it consistently, uh, the better you get, the cleaner you get. But that first canoe, you know, you'll never forget it. So the Molokai Channel, the Ka'iwi Channel is, is really touted as the world championship course. And you have, you have a solo race and you have a, a relay race. Um, I've been lucky enough to get five solo wins and 10 relay wins. You're in open ocean. You can go anywhere you want. Yes, you have to get to point B. You have all this space to play. The thrill is, you know, sometimes when you have those wins, you have big white caps out there and all you, you just hear the ocean rumbling behind you and you don't know what's coming or, you know, you're in the elements. Paddling by far is a, a, a major community sport. And at home, we have a pretty tight-knit community for it. Generally, we'll have at least four or five of us that'll go out and push each other. I mean, it's, it's like a you know, extended family. You know, you got your network of, of buddies all over the place and, and you know, they're, they're friends for life. You know, somebody asked me once, you know, what, what was your most meaningful win? And I, I enjoyed all my solo wins because that's just me and me alone. But, but for me, it's always more fun sharing 
that win with somebody, you know, whether it's in the relay or in your six-man team. And it's just because sharing, sharing that time with others, there's just more involved, you know. Yeah, I really enjoy training with others too, just because it's again, it's you're out there with your buddies training, and it's, you're, you're trying to beat each other up the whole time. But it's more, you know, having a laugh about it afterwards. Like I got you on that one, you know, or any something like that, you know. And and that and that fighter one is all the way from here. It's all the way from here, all the way down. Are you guys gonna do your birthday today, Kelliana? Oh. No, really? You're just wearing the crown to wear it. So pretty. The bubbles. She does want to come with us. She jumps out. We then. drove from the airport to the boat ramp. I got it, but we're stopped at Kanokuk High School. Yep. It's next to the highway. If she jumps out, she will get hit. Okay. Yeah, girl. No, 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 <laughs> no. Put it down. She's getting spoiled at Uncle Clay's house. Oh, we gotta run. Did we run? That was the bell. Dakota. Good morning. Good morning. Have a good day, bud. Bye, Dad. <laughs> oh, no, anyone recognize him when he came home? <laughs> the haircut. <laughs> oh, girl, how are you? Mm. We're going. Mm. What's okay, Jay? Her birthday. Yeah. It was on Monday, so I had plenty of birthdays, I feel like, in the class this week. So I was like, I'll take the later. Running a business and raising a family is, um, is sometimes tough luckily i've got a great boss um and and she's the mother of our children as well uh, my wife's name is kailani we met so it, it's actually a pretty classic story i've known her parents for years through paddling. Her, her, both her parents are big time paddlers on Molokai. Um, the night before we checked into our hotel from Molokai, I would first stay at their house. The first time I met Kea, she was home uh, just for the weekend and it happened to be a Molokai race. And then at the after party, I ran into her again and um, yeah, we just had good fun conversation. I was like, wow. Okay, something, that was nice. That Something's clicking, something's clicking. It was before one Molokai Hoi. I just, this, she was home. She went to go stay with her dad. Her mom's on a trip. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll go to Molokai a couple days early, you know, I'll go, I'll go rig the canoe early. And so I went over there to go rig the canoe early, hang out with her, and, uh, and we had a good time. Called up uh, her dad and uh, he was good with it. She didn't want to just date if nothing was gonna happen. She wanted to make sure if, if, if we moved further along and got married that kids were involved and so I had all the right answers, I guess. I said yes to everything, so that was good, it was good. So I actually have three kids. So my, my first daughter, her name is Leah, and she is 17 now. Wants nothing to do with anything on the ocean, she's all about rodeo. She'd do well in Tennessee. And Kealani and I have two kids, uh, Kaikea, who's five, and Keliana, she just turned three. And Kaikea, we've got him on the canoe already. Actually, we've got both kids on the canoe. Uh, when we're in the mainland for my treatment, Keliana came up, both kids came up, and we went up to a cabin. Man, every morning, she wanted to go do the workout with you. It's certainly, as any parent would know, a priceless moment when you hold your child for the first time. I mean, any day with them is priceless because I'm pretty lucky. With all my kids, I do see um, a desire to be creative. 
you know, you, you're given an art project for school and you just go way freaking overboard, you know, and then you need a tractor to bring the art project in the class. Kai Kez, he's all into his drawing right now. Um, that was me as a kid. Kelliana, she enjoys her singing. I don't know if that's because of uh, mom's side or my side. They're really more into their education and, and enjoying school, and that didn't come from me. Waking up and, and seeing the kids, and it's just seeing these little guys grow up, and they're just little parts of you, you know? They're, they're, they're a little half of you, and you know, there's so many good things about being a dad. It's, it's pretty priceless. Luckily, I've got a great wife, so she does a lot of the raising too. She does most of it. Because, you know, your kids will drive you crazy at times. That's what they're there for. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chowder Jack 22. Time to eat, back from the dead, but don't repeat. I'm the missing link. Open your eyes, what do you seek? My vision complete. You know, well before I showed up for the race, you'd hear about the race just because it's kind of a, it seems like it's a pretty prestigious race out in this area. And you always heard of the Chattajack, so it was always that real, you know, oh, this is something I need to check out. This is something I need to check out. There's like 600 some people on the river. This has got to be exciting. With that belt buckle in your mind after five years, you know, once I decided, hey, I'm going to do year two, it is like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for all five. 32 miles to me in our outrigger world would be equivalent to a marathon in the running world. Chattajack last year, I came over and uh, did it on three men with a couple buddies. We decided to go three men just to make it a little easier on me because I wasn't feeling it. But after the race, my buddy's like, dude, something, you're not, you're not the same. My name's Kai Bartlett. Title I'd give myself, human. He's passed out. He's I'm gonna have to come up the vitals in a second. The cancer I have is multiple myeloma. Um, it's, it's not a curable cancer, but it's, it's a cancer that they can treat to a point to where it's somewhat non-effective, but you have to main, do maintenance and live off maintenance the rest of your life and until, unless we can outlive it to where they have a, a cure for it. Um, it's a cancer in the bone marrow. And you know, to be honest, I tried to not learn too much about it. I, but my wife has learned a ton about it because she was pretty much my caretaker and my nurse. I just, I just figured uh, all, all I want to do is just fight it. Something you never think about in your life until it hits you. So multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma comes in a couple different forms, I, I, I believe. One, one form is it attacks your bones. I'm not sure if I'm lucky or not, but the other form is more uh, fatigue, an anemia, and that's the form that I was feeling or getting. It didn't really get to my bones yet. I was just very fatigued. I was starting to feel that a year ago. It was COVID, so there's no races going on. So we're just doing fun runs. And I just didn't have the, the same wind in the lungs. I didn't, I didn't um, you know, muscles be a lot more sore. I just felt really out of shape. And so I was like, man, something's up. And it, it might just be, you know, not doing much during COVID and maybe a little more alcohol intake during COVID. Age 
you know, all those factors were running through my head. It just kept getting worse and worse. Right before Thanksgiving, I went out with a bunch of buddies and I mean, I was getting beat up by 60 year olds. And I was like, okay, hey, uh, that's it. I'm not, no, nothing active until I get a doctor's appointment. And woke up one morning, thought I'd take the kids to school and blew my nose, it's just blood. Just the whole napkin was just blood. So I was like, oh. ER today, I'm going straight in. Got in there, I'm glad I did. Just because with the ER, they thoroughly check you out and they did a blood test on me. My hemoglobin was at five. Generally it's around, what, 12 to 14 for men. When you know nothing about it and you just get hit with, hey, this is what you got. You know, what, what you see in the future is just so uncertain. So, you know, the doctors, they've got all these terms and I, I'm not, I don't know these medical terms, a multiple myeloma, what's that? I don't know what that is, you know? If you tell me cancer, I know what cancer is. Um, so it's actually one of the nurses, and I said, hey, I know she's coming in and telling me this, but can you give it to me in English, like low-grade English? She's like, well, it's a, it's a cancer. And I was like, oh, shit. Ah, the feeling was, you know, it was, Kind of, yeah, your heart sunk. There's a feeling of loneliness, emptiness, um, scared, fear. I wasn't angry. I was worried. And it wasn't necessarily worried about myself, it was more worried about my kids. You know, they're young, they need a father. That's, that's what I was worried about. You know, every, every child needs that, that hero in their life and, you know, you wanna, you wanna be there for them. That was, that was really what it was. Kenyana, what are you wearing? that worry like god can i can i be here for him well will i be able to see them graduate that, that was the biggest thing you know i knew if i had a fighting chance i was gonna pull it off just because i'm not gonna quit just because you know i gotta be there for them so It wasn't a fun day. It wasn't a fun day. It wasn't a fun, I, I gotta say, you know, it, it was about 15 minutes of, of quietly processing it mentally. Um, but the doctor came in and, you know, she's pretty assuring about, you know, how far they've gone with the disease and, and what they can do and, you know, she thought, with my age and you know being somewhat in decent shape I could fight fight on and yeah oh, it's pretty cool when you been going through this um I don't want to call it an adventure because but it is an adventure it's just an adventure you don't wish to sign up for but when you're there, you gotta do it. So it's pretty cool. I think any any parent that would be in the shoes I was in with, with two young ones at home, that, that, that'd be their first worry. You know, coming back and starting to feel healthier, a lot of those things that I really enjoyed in life, activities-wise, came back. Um, stem cell transplant back in August. I just pray that, you know, that can keep it at bay for a while. Talking to the doctor, um, you know, he, he was saying that he deals with patients that just have a real hard time at it, but they're not in physically good shape. So right there, I was like, all right, game plan. I, I'm just thankful I can 
be in the water again. You know, it's something I always enjoyed, but you know, through life, you kind of let it go at times just because of other responsibilities. You know, and, and at home, we always have that saying, you know, it's, it's vitamin C, you know, S-E-A. Oh, it's good therapy. It's good mental therapy. You know, part of my healing was trying to get back and, and get the blood flowing again and, and, and exercise. And I mean, in the beginning, it was hard. You know, I could do maybe 20 minutes and then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. And then it just slowly built from there and I kind of had set myself goals. Okay, once I can do three laps around this harbor, I'm going to go do this downwind run. From there, it just slowly, you know, I set the next goal. I set the next goal. And I started calling some people out too. It's like, hey, if I'm going through this, and you're not going through anything, you should be out here with me. You know, get off the couch, let's go. I was doing it for myself, but at the same time, I feel like it, it you know, and, and people did say, you know, it's kind of inspiring others. So, kind of made me want to push more. This is going to help me be better, get better, stay better. I'm doing it. I got to, I got to be around for the kids, so. If this is making me healthy, then I gotta go. My my biggest motivation um, with fighting is 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 the kids, the family, and and watching my kids graduate, at least high school. If I can make it that far, at least I know we we done our job to put them out into the world where now it's time for them to grow. All, all the other stuff doesn't mean much. You know, the people that helped me the most since my diagnosis, it's, it's been incredible. There's been, God, a vast array of, of people, you know, good friends. Um, of course, number one and foremost is my wife. Yo, without her, oof, that would have been a tough road. And I've had a lot of dear friends always checking in, you know, boys I paddle with at home. You know, it's such a great community that came forward to be there for us. You know, I tried not to show it too often, but you, you sometimes think about the worst. And you're like, God, you know, it could be coming to the end or, you know, I, again, in the first month, I didn't know, you know, I mean, I was, I was skin and bones, you know, I, I didn't know what the heck was going to happen. So the biggest, you know, motivation was to just fight, make sure I was going to be there. But before we do, I just want to say thank you guys so much so for having us so take care so of the house and of no, ourselves no, no, no. and our family and checking in on us, and especially Kai, but not just him, just myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Taking care of the kids and um, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. thank you guys for all your support through the journey. Still got some journey to go, but that was a big journey. Thank you for all that. All of you. Heat two can start lining up. I have not quit a race yet. I don't know what to expect this year. Uh, I think for me and, and, and what I've gone through, it's, it's just getting there. <laughs> and I figured, hey, I did it. I did it when I was sick without knowing I was sick. So hopefully now that I'm a little healthier, I might have more in the tank. When I paddle with a group and I'm in a team, I'm very competitive. I want to win because 
I don't want to let down my team. Once you're on the water, make your way down to the bridge. When I'm paddling out to the starting line, I'm thinking about, man, let's get the motor running. Let's start warming up the engine a little bit. You know, and then the last couple of years was almost more of that nervousness, like, okay, here we go, let's go, it's going to be a long one. And then last year was really like that, just because of how I was starting to feel. But generally in, a, in, a, in any race, yeah, once that horn goes, it's, it's a whole nother element to your paddling in a sense. And this year, this year, it's definitely going to be a, it'll be a nervous excitement. Exciting to, to go and get her going and, and nervous on how is this going to go. Cheer them on, folks. You guys going to sit down or you guys going to stand up? Stand up. Okay, you guys have to talk loud, okay? Daddy, you're my hero. Because oh. you take me on adventures and... You paddle and fish with me. Okay, your turn, Kiana. Say what you love about your daddy. Um, he always brushes my teeth. You love that he brushes your teeth. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Or get milk. Or get milk. Our treats, our snacks. You love your daddy. Yeah. How much do you love your daddy? Tell me how much. That's much. That's how much you what? Daddy, I love you so much. My name's Kai Bartlett. I guess I'm just lucky. You know, those hard parts of the race is always almost like that first six miles because you're just trying to find your rhythm. The, the Chatterjack is pretty unique uh, in regards to, you know, being out there with everybody. Everybody's in the same shoes as you. They're on all kinds of different crafts. I mean, there's some on, you know, four person, five person stand up board. That next point of it being hard is maybe at that 18 to 22 where your back is going to get sore, uh, your butt's going to get sore towards the end. Uh, especially with the six man we're using, those seats are very uncomfortable. You get that second win, and we call it the second win. And when I was younger, I'd, I'd, I'd call it like going through one door through another because you'd just be hitting kind of the wall, and all of a sudden it was like, bam, I'm back. That feeling you get when you you round the last point and you see you see that structure and it it's a big relief but also excitement and you kind of you know you, you're pushing to get there but it's still quite a stretch and so it's kind of wearing on you a little bit but man when you round that structure and you, you come into the finish line dude that adrenaline just spikes and you're like all right this the, this is the last 75 yards let's pound it out and get her done and it helps with having that sprint there at the end too because it's like okay here it comes here it comes here it comes all right now But that relief almost refreshes you and you get excited and you, you start pushing it harder. And in first place, Kai Uba Strong. Congratulations. Watching him progress over the past year has been it's been really inspiring, I mean, just for myself as well, to kind of see how he persevered through a lot of different hurdles, and he kind of makes it look really easy. And so watching everything he's kind of gone through in the past year and to see him come out on the other side so strong is something that um, 
I hope that others know that, you know, your lifestyle doesn't stop and you can continue on. And I thought it was very fitting that he was in a six man being supported by others and that it was his easiest shot of Jack. So, yeah. Sorry. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> You know, if you, if you feel like it's hard to get out there, just try to get out there and do a little something. You know, just keep blood flowing or, or try to just loosen up the body. You know, if you lie around too long, things get stiff, more brittle maybe, muscles, you know, don't want to move. And it's just trying to push yourself to do a little more than you did yesterday. What's exciting for me in the future is, is uh, in a sense, it's kind of unknown, you know, we're still, we're gonna, my future is unknown, but what I'm gonna try to do is just keep going, living it, living it day to day, week to week, and see how life goes.